Side at four, focused on you. Right now at four, a local umpire is behind bars. Investigators say he used his job to develop inappropriate relationships with teenagers. Good evening. Thanks for joining us at four. I'm Brent Solomon. Kay Quinn has the night off. Crestwood police recently arrested the former Afton Athletic Association umpire for cases involving two victims, but now they're already hearing about more possible victims. Following your size, Holden Kerwicki joins us in studio with what he's learning. Holden. Well, Brent, uh, the, the suspect in this case, James Barebo, is currently in the St. Louis County Jail with a $500,000 bond in connection with multiple charges of inappropriate relationships with minors that he met through his job as an umpire. According to Sergeant James Jones, Crestwood police were contacted in June by a parent who reported Barebo for sexually assaulting their child. Investigators believe that he used his job to make connections with children that he later started messaging through Snapchat before meeting up with them alone. Barebo currently faces 11 charges, including counts of sodomy and sexual molestation with regards to those two separate incidents in Crestwood and St. Louis County. But Sergeant Jones is concerned there may be more victims. We are already receiving phone calls on other incidents and his propensity and other things. Uh, so we are looking into those now and I encourage anyone to speak to their children if they've had any contact with him. If you believe that your child was contacted by Barabo, you're being asked to call the Crestwood police. Coming up at 6, I'll share more information from investigators as we take a closer look into this case. Brent. Holden, thanks. A few spotty showers this morning. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is here with your weather first forecast. Scott, you know, tomorrow's the first day of fall. It is, but it's going to feel more like summer around St. Louis and that humidity and temperatures well into the 80s today ahead of a little disturbance has kicked off more showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Most of the action now is into the Metro East across the river on the Illinois side. Here's what's going on. As we look at the broader view, yes, there's one little cell far southern Jefferson County down into parts of Reynolds County, but these are the ones in the metro area that have been producing downpours from Belleville getting into Freeburg. This is moving up towards Interstate 64, of course, from O'Fallon all the way back towards the Poplar Street Bridge. It's been pretty wet at times with rain coming down at a pretty good clip. You still have some downpours here as you work your way into northern Madison County, southern portions of Macoupin County, but most of the metro to the west at the moment is on the quiet side after we saw some of those showers and thunderstorms. There's a look out in O'Fallon, Illinois. Yes, there are some raindrops on the camera right now. We do think as we head through the evening hours, we will expect to see the rain chances diminish once we lose the heat of the day. So most of our high school football games should get off to a pretty good start tonight and tomorrow bright and quite warm for our first day of fall. We'll see you in a few minutes. And we'll talk about that Sunday shower chance. All right, Scott, we'll see you shortly. Remember, you can get the latest weather first forecast anytime. Text the word weather to 314-425-5355. Well, two guards in charge of watching prisoner Tommy Wayne Boyd at Mercy Hospital South are no longer employed with the Missouri Department of Corrections. Boyd escaped from the hospital early Thursday morning. He was captured while walking into a Deerberg's in Shrewsbury about 16 hours later. According to state law enforcement sources, one of the guards fell asleep and the other went to the bathroom. Boyd got the key to his handcuffs off of the sleeping guard took the guard's jacket and walked out. It's not clear if those guards were fired or if they resigned. Five on your sites, Christine Byers will have much more on this coming up at five. 38 auto plants are joining the United Auto Workers strike. That means there are now 41 facilities with workers on the picket lines. In that same announcement today, UAW President Sean Fain said only GM and Stellantis will be hit by the second wave of strikes. Ford has come to the table and is working with UAW on resolutions. In his live address, Fain spoke directly to three locals, including Local 2250 in Wentzville. I want to lift up our members who have been holding a line at the Big Three for the past week. Local 2250, Region 4 in Wentzville, Missouri at GM. Local 12, Region 2B in Toledo, Ohio at Stellantis. And Local 900, Region 1A at Michigan Assembly in Wayne, Michigan. They have shown us leadership, courage, and creativity on the picket line. Shortly after that statement, he said negotiations with GM and Stellantis still have a way to go. Still, morale was high at the UAW Hall in Wentzville. 
Multiple unions from St. Louis, Springfield and Kansas City showed up to show their support, mostly by bringing food and grilling for the picketing members. Well, across the country, all types of workers have organized, picketed and gone on strike this summer. From auto workers to baristas, many are fighting for higher wages, more benefits and better working conditions. Gloria Pasmino reports. Some progress in negotiations between auto workers and at least one of the big three. Ford is showing that they're serious about reaching a deal. But the ongoing dispute between the UAW and the two other major automakers, GM and Stellantis, deepening significantly on Friday. We will shut down parts distribution until those two companies come to their senses and come to the table with a serious offer. The strike expansion is aimed at hurting dealerships, with the hope dealership owners will ratchet up the pressure on the car makers. This comes as Hollywood writers and studios ended marathon negotiations Thursday without an agreement, as the writers' work stoppage now exceeds 20 weeks. I'm just really hopeful because it seems like all parties are really, really ready to just like get it done. But these strikes aren't happening in a vacuum. From actors to delivery drivers, nurses to baristas, workers are encouraged by a tight labor market and strong economy. I think it's all over the labor market we're seeing stirrings of this kind. Labor expert Ruth Milkman says a generational shift coupled with decades of stagnant wages amid soaring corporate profits and CEO pay is fueling concerted efforts to organize. A lot of workers are more conscious than they were before of the injustice that they face at work and of the inequalities that exist in the society that we're living in. In New York, I'm Gloria Pasmino. Today, St. Louis police are investigating a car crash that happened on westbound I-44 near Kings Highway. It happened around 1.30 this morning, and here you can see that mangled vehicle. While the crash happened on the highway, investigators say one of the drivers moved to the area by Arsenal Street in Brennan. Right now, we don't have much information about this crash, how it happened, or if anyone was hurt or killed. Well, a visitation today for a Marine and Belleville native killed during a training exercise. Captain Eleanor LeBeau is one of three that died in an Osprey crash in Australia last month. The visitation is at George Renner and Son's funeral home in Belleville. It ends at 7 tonight. Her funeral and burial are scheduled for tomorrow at St. Peter's Cathedral Catholic Church in Belleville. Still ahead, a surge at the border. The policy a Texas town is implementing to try and keep migrants from crossing. Plus, a papal visit to Marseille. How Pope Francis is encouraging countries to welcome migrants.